Roofing continues, we're probably right around 65, 60, 65% under uh, finished roof at this point. A little bit of detailing and, and uh, metal trim and coping work to do on all of those roof areas moving forward. Um, but it does dry us in for the most part. So that really remains our biggest focus right now is, is getting dried in um, to the point where we can start dry all, start temporary conditioning. Um, once uh, May and June come on, so that we can actually bring finishes in, uh, such as no work for products, things that need temperature control and humidity control. Um, on the inside of the building, we continue to frame walls. Uh, we're all the way up to the north side of the building on both the first and second floors. Second floor has actually jumped a little bit ahead of the first floor um, just because of uh, availability. The slab was um, ready on the second floor before we had the first floor slab board. And uh, so the second floor is, is a little ahead, which we expect to stay uh, that way moving forward. Um, inside the gymnasiums, we field measured for all the athletic equipment. So athletic equipment is scheduled for July. Um, and that's all out of order. Bleachers are lost. Um, Overhead MEP uh, mechanical electrical plumbing continues moving right along. Uh, that's in really good shape. Uh, we we uh, are on schedule for this Saturday actually to switch over to our permanent electrical gear and permanent electric suits to come in. Um, so we've got them on board. They were out today making some connections for us to, to prep for that. And then that will happen Saturday. We'll have a shutdown. That, that would be behind us. So that's a that's a major milestone. We can get rid of all the temporary gear. Um, but the main thing that signals is we are able to run the permanent equipment when the time comes. Right? So um, we had a little bit of a scare a couple weeks ago with not being able to get um, our VFDs, which are variable frequency controllers, to run the equipment. Um, no sooner did we talk about that as a as a small group and what the challenges were with that. Um, miraculously, it resolved itself and we got all of those uh, pieces of equipment. So, um, overall, it's moving really well. Um, like I said, we've, we've fought a lot of weather here in the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, we are a little bit behind schedule uh, right now, to be honest with you. Um, and we're looking at uh, how, you know, what we can do. We've been working a lot of overtime on this, both the roofing crew and the exterior framing and sheeting crews. Um, to try and pick the schedule up and, and bring it back. Um, and we'll continue to evaluate that. We sat down last week and did a really deep dive into our schedule, continue doing that um, and see where we can bring it back to, where we can apply overtime dollars to uh, the, uh, the best way to bring back the schedule to where it's going to be. So, about two, two and a half weeks right now. So. Just looking at there's a there's a lot of time to go yet kind of right uh, October sixth is not very far away but um, you know as we get into finished trades uh, we've really got to dive into our finishes activities we've got things uh, grouped pretty tight already uh, we had a you know just on mid day we had a uh, every every five days we start drywall in the area so it's an area being one sixth of the building. So it's a pretty quick pace when we get into the finishes. Uh, basically, an area goes from overhead rough in, start of drywall um, to complete, completely finished in 10 weeks. So, so that's where we're at right now. So I will have more for you that, on that uh, topic next month. Uh, we'll continue to evaluate in the meantime and see what we can do. Um, right now, materials, I know that's always a question, right? What materials are, are holding us up? Um, like I said, we had a little bit of a scare on the, the frequency drives uh, that righted itself. And right now, I think all of our material uh, is available. We have an insulation issue, but we, we were able to find another alternative insulation. Um, same product, just a little bit thicker, uh, which is actually a better thing. So yeah, I, I don't think on the sunny side of the project right now, I don't have any material. Our glass is all on order, like I said, a bunch of it's an outdoor village shop. Our curtain wall is being fabricated. 
which are our large exterior windows and things. Um, and we'll start arriving uh, late next week at the latest. So all that stuff is in progress. And we're still targeting to start up the mechanical units um, right around the beginning of June. Any questions on Sunset MacArthur? You answered my question. So. <laughs> I just I know the answer to that one. Okay. Any questions from the board? Good you. Appreciate that. All right. So I'll jump to Riley Northlake then. About the same length of video. We did get going over there this month a little bit. This is the we got in here and passed this.
daily contact with them, but uh, it's tough. Uh, unlike ComEd, where we have a dedicated representative, um, you know, the district uh, that we can turn to at night or we just get sent to the scheduling. Scheduling phone number, and we talk with five different people a week. So we can have so that's been the challenge there. Um, aside from that, you know, we're, we're prepping the site to put in um, the temporary roads, the fence, um, getting ready for ground running, a burger, the excavator is chopping at the to get going. Um, every, every bit as much as we are. So. Um, that's the main highlights for Riley North Lake. Questions? Any questions from the board? Administration? Anyone? Any okay. questions? All right. Then we'll turn to the change orders. So do have eight of them for you tonight. So I'll try and make this quick. A lot of more stuff we've talked about. Um, the first four are Sunnyside and Parker here. The last four are at the North Lake. And they're all uh, predominantly here towards the East Edge. So just in summary, real quick, Joe, I'm going to talk about the color issue. Um, so in summary, what we're going to go through tonight the total uh, for Sunnyside MacArthur is a. Um, the total of these change orders is going to be an add of $62,276. On the flip side of that, we'll try the North Lake summary. The total of the change orders is going to be a credit of $959,820. So that's the BQ we've been talking about, uh, almost a million dollars that we're still working on. So that's that's kind of the summary of, of what we're talking about tonight um, with everything there, uh, the contingency you can see would sit uh, just over $4.2 million. So we'll go to the right direction, right? Exactly right. So the first change order I have for you is Sunnyside MacArthur. Like I said, um, it's district change order 42 and it relates to PR Part one. Um, as I mentioned with the cold form framing, there's a lot of stuff uh, in the cold form framing is the, the exterior studs that you see with the green sheeting on them. Um, there's a lot of a lot of coordination um, that has to happen between the cold form and steel, the, the glass openings. Um, and so a lot of that stuff is really hard to bet and just looking through drawings and details and you don't stumble upon it until it's it's under your feet and you're trying to lay out a wall. So that's really what this is. This is here. Um, each of the corners of the building has a difficult um, curtain wall and metal panel eyebrow uh, detail. And once we got into framing that, we realized there were some conflicts between the structure, the framing, the sizes of the glass openings for yourself. Um, this one resulted in our biggest ad. This is an ad of $44,179. Um, the full farm frame is just really slow and labor intensive. Um, and so that, that drove the cost on this one. Um, second one is change order 43, relates to PR 32. Um, this is a smaller one, it's a couple of casework revisions, which actually added a small credit, some volleyball striping. Added railing that was just oversight on the on the panels. So here we have an add of three thousand two hundred twenty-three dollars. Change order forty-four relates to PR thirty-three. Uh, this was uh, just during the finalization of the design process. There was a window that was shifted. There was a small section of into that remained uh, in place, and it wasn't necessary. So this one added a credit of seven hundred fifteen dollars. As a side note to that, the material was already purchased in shop in house. Um, so we talked with Dale with that material that we're not going to be prepared for will be turned over to the district. Um, the next one and the last one here for site set in the park is change order 45. This is again 
uh, additional full form framing um, coordination items. And this is really revolving around the door penthouse. So again, we had uh, a difficult detail where uh, two wall sections come together with an expansion, to a building expansion joint between them. Um, and so the metal, how the metal panels, the studs, the roofing all came together there uh, uh, turned out to be a challenging uh, detail. And so we had to make some revisions to, to ensure that the expansion uh, stayed intact. So this, um, again, was full form framing related, uh, was a lot of labor. And so there was an add of 15,500. So that's the four um, big ones for, or the four for Sunnyside departure. I will note that as you can see, a lot of the full form framing is done. We are laid out through area C, which is the last area. We're, I don't know, 25% frame on that area. So within the next month, all that full form framing will wrap up. That's been our biggest challenge here. As you can see, some of the larger change orders we've had to deal with. So we feel good standing here tonight that we're, we're pretty much through the full form framing uh, items. All right, moving on to Riley North Lake, uh, change order 46 here is PR number one. Uh, this is our largest DE value engineering item. Uh, we incorporated uh, exterior metal panels, exterior soffit systems, floor finishes, ceiling designs, roofing modifications, all the things we've been talking about we had on that initial list as ideas come from the whole team field team. This had the credit. $532,830. Second one is uh, change order 47 relates to PR3. This is the big mechanical and plumbing scope reductions, mainly mechanical. So we thought this was going to bring us about $300,000 worth of credits. Uh, and we got uh, $349,120. Uh, Change order 48 relates to PR4. And this is uh, mainly revisions to the ceramic tile mix of bathrooms. On bid day, we have bid the ceramic tile, full height, all the way to the ceiling, and all bathrooms throughout the street, um, including over the, the existing glazed block. The durability of the glazed block is there. It's not like drywall where it dents and digs and scratches. Um, so we, during the beating process, looked at what could we do? What could we use? We reduce the ceramic tile height down to three feet, and we're painting the glazed block. Over. So that's the finishes that netted a really nice credit. Um, there are a couple other updates to this one, uh, but we the end all is a, a credit of eighty nine thousand eight hundred fifty three. Last one for Riley Northlake is an ad for the smaller one at that. Um, and if you remember, we bid, we had two bid releases for Riley North Lake. We had bid release five, which was structural steel and concrete, and then we had the rest of the packages. Um, during that process and finalizing the rest of the design, there were some things that details that needed to be updated and steel modifications that needed to be made. Um, so this change order, change order 49, is catching up the bid release five steel contract with the current set of documents issued. Construction set documents, um, and that 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 was an add of eleven thousand five hundred fifty-three dollars. Any questions? Love to see. Great. <laughs> We're looking for more. Still looks in the overtime. Still looks in the overtime. That's no answer. Yeah, that's no so, answer. Are there any questions, Jeremy? Thank you. Thank you. Just want to ask the Jefferson Whittier renovations, the mm -hmm. furniture, which is part of that referendum, as, and then in addition to that, as we previously got for the board, the HVAC replacement at Jefferson Whittier that we were able to fund through the ESSER grants. Yeah, so I don't have a slide for this one. Um, the first uh, topic is the, the proposal for all the work happening in Jefferson and Whittier. So um, you have that proposal in your board packet. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. But 
the, the gist of it is uh, understanding you sat down uh, to, to review the scope of the district, uh, understanding what uh, refreshing the furniture at each school and uh, looking at, we'll, we'll do a survey to make sure that we supplement classrooms appropriately and things like that. Um, it does only include furniture, so ABD is not included for this, and it's our understanding that ABD has been largely updated in those two schools, so those are good to go. Um, and then for the uh, referendum scope, it is looking at updating your media center and STEM spaces as kind of your, your key focal area, and then remaining health facing projects at each school. So wiping those off, starting with the main slate, uh, and getting those people to do that. Um, those, that's kind of the, the referendum piece and then the HVAC piece funded through ESSER grants. Uh, the initial or the initial budget Fred presented, I believe last fall, I want to say October, um, gave an overall budget of 1.9 million. Um, since then, we were asked to reevaluate and make sure that our budget was in alignment, um, just given all of the volatility of the construction market. So the update you see is actually that full project cost of 2.1 million. So that increase was truly just in uh, mechanical systems uh, cost increases, but we do also include mechanical testing and contingency as part of that project budget. So that is that all in cost. Uh, making sure that we stay true to that looking forward. Um, and then taking a look, the other piece is because Jefferson and Whittier are very similar in scope and age range, we're able to find some efficiencies in the design process. So you'll see that reflected in our proposed fee. Uh, happy to answer any questions anyone has on that. Any of those three projects or all of them. HVAC was part of a grant, not part of a part of a grant, right? Yes, the ESSER funds. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Then I will jump to furniture. So furniture is the, the first area I have uh, a little bit of a slide for. Again, you have our full uh, the full purchase proposal in your packet. So to be able to pour over the details, but wanted to give you guys an overview of what we're looking at in the FFE budget. Um, furniture itself for all four buildings, Ryan, North Lake, Sunnyside, and MacArthur was pegged at uh, 2.9 million inside that 3.6 million soft cost budget. Um, we are coming in at $2,885,640. So what that means is the first phase that you already uh, agreed to purchase in February and has since been ordered was 461756 Those were your phase one construction spaces at Riley Brooklyn, mostly your classrooms. Um, phase two is everything else. So this is wrapping up the furniture purchase for those four schools. Um, for a total of $2,286,472 for the rest of it. So that brings it all in total. Um, the other thing that we were very careful to include on top of the typical 10% contingency in the overall budget was a 5% framing of the contingency. So inside that amount, the, the proposals that you have in front of you don't include that cost, but we are presenting that as a just in case so that it doesn't hold up any purchasing um, in the future, any deliveries in the future, but we are holding uh, $137,411 in that separate area of contingency. No one's getting a check cut for that right now, but we are holding it for budgeting purposes just because some of your furniture isn't being delivered for another year and a half. Um, so that is truly a safeguard. Hopefully, we don't touch it. Our goal is to not touch it. Um, a lot of it is getting ordered, um, has been ordered and is warehoused for the. The items are right in Berkeley. We're working with the distributor to understand delivery times. Um, but there's also just making sure that we can get those items for the second summer at Riley Berkeley uh, here and without it's a surcharge is what that that 5% uh, is covering. So um, those are the biggest items there. Um, I have reached out to playground signage and blind vendors to make sure that those budget line items are still good. And so um, with furniture wrapping up, we'll start focusing on those areas to make sure that we get those budgets uh, updated in your, in your hands in the coming board meetings. Any other questions on furniture? And you said it's running about a year and a half behind furniture? No, well, the, the time you would need it. So it's a year and a half 
from the start of school for Riley North Lake for your media centers and a couple of your other larger spaces. So they'll get ordered right now. Um, and then just making sure that if they get ordered right now in the queue, that we don't have a delivery surcharge if they were to get delivered next summer, essentially. So not running that in terms of timeline necessarily, just making sure that it's here in time for a we build a plan in case we have something that went a month as for we are. Yes. Okay. That will all take place in our moving foot. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Here is not here. We will be holding on to that furniture that we currently have and move it into town. Keep it at still the new furniture plus that. Because we may have some additional furniture costs moving and stuff back and forth. But we will have it. So. Any other questions on furniture? Not. I'll jump to the final piece, which is the overall budget update. And again, everyone has the, the full master budget uh, that was updated with uh, for the board packet. But taking a look at these numbers, um, we've added a couple of other things that have popped up in the last few weeks. Um, we understand that the food service grant was not awarded, so that was removed as a funding source. But likewise, we were also awarded or um, given ComEd incentives. Uh, so we received confirmation that an additional $21,000 will be paid back to the district by ComEd for the new building. Um, so that is payable upon uh, occupancy, but that is something that they have confirmed with the specs and what was, uh, what was ordered for the school. So that is something that is fluctuated in the total funding amount. Um, and then in the other expenses, we did include those moving costs uh, that Dale's provided. So that is something that is a, a big adjustment from what we saw in the last update. Uh, not hard construction costs, but things you know weren't anticipated. We did have a, a budget set aside. It, it wasn't quite enough. So that is something that we're showing there, the uh, overage. And then um, the additional part is that all those VE exercises that we've done that Jeremy showed um, are shown in the budget to date. And so uh, the other thing I did just want to kind of bring back to mention in that 541,000, there was an alternate accepted at Riley Northwood for additional um, sprinkler in, in North Lake, if you recall. So that is something that is still, it was committed to and agreed to that it could be out of district funds. So that is skewing that number a little bit still. Um, but it is something that we're, we're actively working on. As Jeremy said, we're still looking for savings. And before we jump into questions, Joe, if you can go to the next slide real quick. This is that comparison of the savings that Jeremy showed you. So. Um, taking a look at what we've accepted so far and what we are expecting to come, that additional steel, steel scope that was double bought, that was uh, approved a couple of board meetings ago, that 86000 in savings. Um, and then we looked at what we had estimated and what we got as final pricing. So the biggest discrepancy is in that PR1, we had actually double counted some of the finished changes. Uh, and and the Gilbane team was able to make some of that difference up. It was about $130,000 difference. Um, and they were able to make some of that up. In the, the final pricing, mechanically, we were able to do a little bit better than what we had estimated. Uh, same thing with uh, PR4, which is the, the last item chair we talked about. And then PR5 and PR2 are the last two items that we have out for uh, value engineering in terms of uh, any savings at Riley North Lake. All of these items were looked at with, through the lens of maintaining equity between the schools uh, and not changing any of the scope. So that's what we were able to do and reduce as a part of that. So we were targeting a total savings of 1.17 and change. Uh, and we're looking at a savings of 1.19 from this 1.2 to date. Um, and then just for reference, the budget update and overage that we presented in January, maybe the following our December big discussion was uh, 1.6 overage. So we're getting closer and closer to that every day. Um, and we've had discussions as a, an administrative team with Mold and Gilby about where that additional is coming from um, and what, as part of construction, are we comfortable with starting to make moves? And I know we've talked about that as a board as well. So, 
Um, that is something that we are still looking at and evaluating all the time. We do have further discussions about moving logistics and things like that that we hopefully will be able to play a, a positive impact into that bottom line. But that's my budget update. Are there any questions? Good update, Jessica. Are there any questions from the board? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I get a motion to join our facility. Mr. Jackson, Mr. O'Connor. Roll call, please. Ken Keller? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Mason? Mora? O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Chavez? Meeting it here. Or you need the mistake on it. I mean, if you do not, we will be presenting written the meeting, we'll be presenting the action items for the proposals and the change orders. So if the board has all your questions answered, then we'll be sure. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. We'll go right into our regular board Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Thank you, Thanks, 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 we have Joe Lightcap from Bakersfield Virtual House to present the upcoming bond process for fiscal year 2022. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me tonight. I'll talk a little bit about the audit process and the dates and where some of the questions will take those. So, um, first off, the objective of the audit is to provide reasonable assurance that your financial statements are materially correct. Um, and there's no error, there's no material errors in there either due to um, omission or fraud or anything like that. During the planning process, which is June 6th through June 8th, we will come out and we'll look at internal controls to see if there's any. The main goal of looking at internal controls is to plan our out procedures to see if there are any risky areas that we want to address and how we want to address them. It's also if we see any any items in internal controls that the board should be aware of, we will document those and present those um, and present the audit um, as we normally do. We'll also look at uh, board meeting minutes and we'll look at the financial statements to so talk to management and ask them to refer to the board um, to kind of just kind of get through, you know, see what happened during the year and see what you know the risk here. For final field work, we'll come out the weeks of August 22nd and 29th. And during final field work, we execute the audit plan. We'll do our test transactions, our inquiry and reviews, and our report preparation. But we'll work with management to perform the audit. Those reports for the board. Any questions, concerns, anything you'd like to talk to us about? Should have my contact information from last year's audit presentation. Anything should come to mind. We also have a wrap up week uh, week of October 10th. And then we find final things on the audit. And then we'll work with it. We have um, a little bit of a change up in our audit team this year. Um, so a little bit of a fresh perspective. We have our new general manager who was on your team last year, which has just been being promoted, broken, being promoted to the chart role this year. We've, the, the senior for the last few years have been rolling off the team. There's just a little bit of a fresh perspective. We still have um, myself, your senior audit member, been a different audit for a few years now, is to have that consistency. So we have consistency, but also have some things different questions we have. 
all I really had planned um, to, to talk to the to board tonight. We have any questions now. So we must be in the stems. Sure. We haven't looked at that. Okay. Any questions from Joe? No, I'm just glad uh, Joe is back because internal controls is what we work on. So thank you. And we'll be we'll do more on site now. We've had that in the last couple of years. Help alleviate some of the pressure from from the finance department of getting this information and things like that. Lord, do you have any questions? We do not. Um, we've already um, met through a virtual meeting to schedule the dates, and uh, we have our initial uh, information requests from Baker County. So, the business office and is aware of things we'll have to gather for that. For that preliminary dates, and then we'll review that and add anything if it's the final if it's the final item. I think you've got some update. I appreciate it. You're welcome to stay. I appreciate it. I don't know. We're going to take another look at the buildings. Oh, okay. I think you're the best. Okay. Public participation. Uh, we ask that the board accept the written correspondence as presented. A motion. Mr. Jackson. So come. Roll call, please. Hightower. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Moore. Mason. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Tacos. Cody Perry. And then for um, well, just on the world public comment, we have parent Jen Weisgarber who would like to address the board. And the topic of her statement or question is SEL or social emotional learning and parents. Hi, um, I have two children at Jefferson, and I'm also the JSM PTO secretary. So my questions are more geared toward Jefferson Sunnyside. When I heard the district was utilizing relationship responsibility and regulation as their social emotional tool for the year, I immediately purchased and read it. I found Kristen and Mark Sauer's interpretation to be consistent with my own experiences and practices with children. However, ever since that time last fall, I've been waiting for the district to explain how are they planning to implement the book in its entirety. Chapter one discusses how teachers must begin with building self-awareness. In my experience, this is no easy task and often requires conscious hiring, consistent assistance, and mentorship. On page 174, it suggests that teachers have a tool belt full of self-regulation strategies, as well as connecting her, referring to the teacher, with a mentor or a teammate who can check in with her frequently. It would be a great start. According to the data presented in last month's board meeting, it seemed that less than 50% of our scholars, K through eight, are feeling emotionally regulated in their classrooms. I believe the data also showed, but it was a little difficult to construe from the recording, that the teacher's perception was that 76% of their students are emotionally regulated. One interpretation of this 28% data disparity could be that teachers need further education and sharpened awareness of what their students need to achieve true emotional regulation. In my experience, the top reason teachers leave and or are asked to leave their schools stem from an inability to feel connection in their classroom. The focus lands on the bad behavior of the children, leads to suspensions, discipline, and inevitably the turnover of the teacher. Berkeley District 87 has some of the highest turnover in any of the surrounding counties. And this issue has most recently been paralleled in the media by the statistics of the FISA District 209. The issue seems to be ongoing and prevalent in the entire school career for many, many of our scholars. So my questions are, how are these concepts of building self-awareness in teachers, creating the tool belt full of self-regulation strategies for teachers, and connecting teachers with a mentor or a teammate currently implemented? 
are observations of the classrooms taking place either by the very qualified current staff or by outside professionals. Our teachers who need assistance in this endeavor self-identifying or are the tools we're using identifying them? And what assistance is being offered to both teachers and administrators to acquire these skills? So thank you very much. I shared your email with the board, so you have that already. And then I will be um, compiling the response on behalf of the board. And then I will share that to you through email as you shared with me. And then we, of course, can continue the conversations that we need to. It's been really nice to have a chance to meet you. I did not mention this, but our parent, Jen Weisberger, her mother used to be the administrative assistant at MacArthur Middle School. When she's from the parents. I think you said pre K? Yes. I am a pre K student and a first grade student. And I attended Sunnyside MacArthur K through 8. So very familiar. <laughs> and I think you said you did band. I did do band at the So it's, it's really nice that you're here as a parent. I'm going to turn over respond to this letter. Okay, consideration of business. See, so it would be we ask that the board approve the minutes of the regular board meeting, March 21st, 2022, and for the closed session of February 28th, 2022. Got a motion. So come. Mr. Allen. Roll call, please. Jackson. Sorry. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Hightower. Aye. Motion carried. All right. Any other reports? Uh, no old business. Okay. Yes, we have no old business. Yes. The Board of Education approved the accounts and claims payable authorization as presented. And there were no questions this month. No So, Carl? Mr. Jackson. Roll call, please. O'Connell. O'Connell. Sure. Hi. Hi, Tower. Hi. Jackson. Hi. Motion carried. Thank you. And the monthly billing record report is included in your packet to review this. This is a information for the people. Anything else? Mr. Travis? No. No business. Any other old business? Okay, I'd like to take a motion to go into closed session. Ms. O'Connell? Okay. Ms. Sosa? Aye. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Motion carried. We're just going into closed session. I uh, will not be there long. We'll be there very long. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Reports. Board reports. So Tom. Okay. We had a pace meeting on the 20th of April. Um, I've got a big long report. I'm not even going to go into it. The only thing I want to say, we set our meetings uh, for 2022 and 2023. They're going to start at 7 p.m., not 6 o'clock. And the first one to start at 7 will be on July 20th. Just so everybody knows that, and whoever's at pace, if I'm around, I'll still go there. Okay. And our next meeting is on the 18th of May at 6 p.m. Okay. Thanks, Ms. Obama. Do you have any other meetings? Okay, Ms. Mason's not here. Ms. Perez's not here. Okay, we have a facility meeting right before this one. So all the minutes will be in the next board package. Do you have anything? 
Let's go right to the superintendent. superintendent. Okay. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say to the board, my apologies for misunderstanding the reorganization rules for the board meeting. So I, because when I read it this Saturday morning, which I always try to read ahead of time, and I thought, okay, last April, we didn't have an election, so we don't have a reorganization board meeting. But no, we actually have a reorganization board meeting every year. So my apologies. That's why I sent those emails on Saturday morning. I'm sorry you're dealing with a first year superintendent, and I, I made a mistake. Fine. So we will add that to next month's. Um, so we do those. Where it would be our role, and then the committees that we go on. Good. And then also setting the dates for the meetings. And um, I believe the auditor, auditor and the attorney. And that is done every year. So I missed that first year mistake. Good. Just want to start with that. <laughs> um, we ask that the board accept the letter of intent to retire from the following personnel. Christy Pusatera, Whittier, first grade teacher, effective, end of the 2024-2025 school year. A motion. Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Sosa. Roll call, please. Hightowers? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connor? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Aye. Motion. We ask that the board accept the resignation of the following personnel Veronica Munoretta, Jefferson Primary School, effective the end of the 2021 2022 school year. Mary Roby, Northlake Middle School, is a teacher, effective end of the 2021 2022 school year. Lauren Bowes, Riley Intermediate Social Worker, effective end of the 2021 2022 school year. A motion. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Sosa. Roll call, please. Jackson. Jarrett. O'Connell. I. Sosa. I. I. Tower. I. Motion carried. We ask that the Board of Education approve the license leave of absence requests as presented for Nancy Tortora, Kayla Gandia, Kimberly Marshall, and Katie Poffin. A motion. Mr. O'Connell. And Mr. Jackson. Roll call, please. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Motion carried. We ask that the Board of Education employ the following personnel. Betty Tapia, bilingual kindergarten teacher at Whittier Primary, effective the start of the 2022-2023 school year. And Melanie Swims, inclusion resources teacher at Riley Intermediate, Effective at the start of the 2022-2023 school year. A motion. Mrs. Jackson, Ms. O'Connell. Roll call, please. Sosa? Aye. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Motion carried. We ask that the board approve the reassignment of the following personnel as presented. Catherine Donar, Whittier, second grade teacher, to Riley Intermediate Social Worker for the 2020 to 2023 school year. Motion, Mr. O'Connell. Mr. Sosa, roll call please. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Motion carried. We ask that the Board of Education accept the letter of intent to retire from Gonzalo Vasquez, custodian, effective June 30th, 2022. Got a motion? Mr. Sosa, Ms. O'Connell. Roll call please. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Hightower? Aye. Motion carried. We ask that the Board of Education approve the educational support staff leave of absence request as presented for Francisco Herrera and Fernando Flores Pinedo. Motion, please. Ms. O'Connell? Mr. Jackson? O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Motion We ask that the Board of Education employ the following personnel Diana Ramirez de Paez, cross categorical teacher at Jefferson Primary, effective 4 4 2022. Motion. So, Connell? Mr. Sosa. Roll call, please. Sosa? Aye. 
Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Motion carried. We ask the Board of Education ratify the following fundraiser as presented MacArthur Middle School Student Ambassadors, Leukemia and Lymphoma, Lymphoma Society Fundraiser, Pennyworth, and for North Lake Middle School, the UNICEF Donation Drive. So come, Mrs. Sokol, please. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Motion carried. And at this, I just want to pause for a second and ask um, for um, with at this time in the agenda, what I wanted to mention quickly to the board is I wanted to share this document with our Board of Education. Thank you. And uh, to mention in my as my first year of going through recommendations for sectioning and staff. I wanted to point out that we do not anticipate needing to recommend for hire any additional teachers based on enrollment for next year. In other words, our projections are approximately the same. When you look at this document, you'll notice, and I shared this with you in your weekly memo, but it's the idea of looking at sections. That's one way of tracking how we're doing with staffing because enrollment drives staffing. And what I'm learning as a first year superintendent is this kind of enrollment, I don't necessarily go to the board for and ask for the numbers of teachers that's related to enrollment, but we sometimes have newer positions that we that I have to go to the board and ask for. So I'm still learning that process and making sure I do that in a way which is equal, equitable and following all the needs of our district. So this tells us in terms of meeting the needs of our children every day in the classroom, we have the teachers necessary to schedule our building, but there are our buildings, but there are additional needs that I'm still working on that I want to make sure I go through a very comprehensive process before I ask for additional staff. So first additional staff I'd like to ask for is that um, the Board of Education approve the employment of the following school supports, uh, support personnel. Danielle Scott, school nurse at Jefferson School, effective beginning for the 2022-2023 school year, pending all paperwork. A motion, Ms. O'Connell. Mrs. Sosa. Roll call, please. Hi, Howard. Hi. Jackson. Hi. O'Connell. Hi. Sosa. Hi. Motion carried. And I would like to ask for the um, consent of the board on this document that I just gave. There are, just shared with you, there are two positions that I have learned in this process require a posting of the position. So what I would like is the consent of the board to, I will come back in May for the formal approval of the position with salary benefits, and all additional information. But it's come to my attention that we may lose out on candidates if we don't post the position. So I want to explain these quickly if I could for the board and then take any questions. One is math interventionist recommendation. Currently, we have two math interventionists who work with our children. These um, specialists work directly with the children, and they've been working with the children to close the unfinished learning or learning loss with our younger children. But they're also currently traveling, not only from the primary schools, but also going to the intermediate schools. So there's a process that determines if children are eligible to work with the math interventions. We're finding success, it's working. We want to expand that to have one math interventionist at each, one in each primary and one in each intermediate school. So I'm not asking for formal approval. I'm asking though for the consent of the board to post the position so we can begin advertising it. And this is something that I will continue to work on with the deadline to make sure I do that earlier in the future, but I don't want to miss out on applicants for the position. So you're looking for a consensus? You don't need a motion? 
Uh, no, I guess I don't have it in the agenda. I've got this one on the agenda, but I'm still working on which ones go in the agenda and which ones don't. Ms. Travis, will that be part of your report this afternoon with type as far as additional staff? Yeah. No? Okay. All right. So you need consensus. So I need consensus for um, math interventions. The other position I'm getting is consensus for, again, it's the same idea posted to begin interviewing, begin interviewing is for the primary special education coordinator. And what that refers to is we have a case supervisor who's retired. And this would be an opportunity we can move from having someone who works with our children from outside of our district to have that position with someone who is within our district. And so that's the idea with that. I like the idea. So where are the cost structure when we build on these positions? If you're saying it's going to be consistent, and you want to start the interview process. So we're going to attach a cost. Yeah, we'll be able to build a plan to what it's going to cost for these two positions. Yes. And for these two, we'll definitely have for me and any other positions we'll have for me. So if we're looking for a consensus board, uh, Mr. Jackson, do you agree with that? Yes. Mr. Sosa, you agree with that? So come you agree with that? And thank you for your patience as I. Mr. Hightower, those positions would be posted as anticipated openings because the board has informed me, but posting them as an anticipated opening will allow Mrs. Travis to uh, get them posted and at least start the process to start getting the applicants. But well, we are very conscious of board as far as costs. We want to build into the plan because we have a lot of our plates for us, money's being spent. So we're going to make sure we put into the top plan. Okay. Thank you. And then finally, um, we ask that the um, Board of Education dismiss employee Naradia Estemia, Whittier Lunchroom Supervisor, effective immediately as discussed in the closed session after due consideration of the information presented by the administration. A motion, so Connell. Mr. Jackson, roll call, please. Jackson. Aye. O'Connell, Sosa, Hightower, motion carried. Attached is a copy of the 2022-2023 school calendar. The suggested motion is that the board adopt the 2022-2023 school calendar as proposed and attached to the minutes of this meeting, showing the beginning of school as August 23rd, 2022, the ending of school as June 9th, 2023, with 180 attendance days, Three Institute days, August 22nd, October 14th, February 17th, and two all-day parent-teacher conferences, October 13th and March 9th, for a total of 185 days. Motion. Mr. O'Connell? Mr. Jackson? Roll call, please. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Aye. Tower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, almost finished. Can we also uh, ask the board for approval of the revised 2021-2022 school calendar. The calendar has been revised to remove five emergency days. And uh, I'll just read this very quickly. The board, please, excuse me, to consider approving the revised school calendar as proposed and attached to the minutes, showing the beginning of school as August 24th, 2021, the ending of school is June 3rd, 2022, with 175 attendance days, three institute days, August 23rd, 2021, October 8th, 2021, February 18th, 2022, and two all-day parent-teacher conferences, October 7th, 2021, and March 10th, 2022, for a total of 180 days. That motion. Mr. Jackson, Mr. O'Connor, roll call, please. Sosa? Aye. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Motion carried. And then one last thing, I would like to introduce Mr. Brian Merrick. Brian, say hi to everybody. Hi, Brian. So, you may recall when I took on the new role as superintendent, and uh, was so happy and honored and humbled to have this opportunity. For a while, I want to say until November, we didn't have anyone to help with grants within the team. 
And the team did help. And we figured out a way through and we got everything turned in. But we were so fortunate that through Mrs. Vince's work and the business office and Mrs. Travis that we found Mr. Merrick. So Brian has been working with us since uh, someday in November, I can't remember the exact day, but it's been a pleasure to work with Brian. And he's going to present the consolidated district plan for your approval. Right? Yeah, thank you, Axel. Well, thank you. Um, so I have the grant coordinator for the district and together with the department heads, Dr. Sullivan, uh, we've worked on this consolidated district plan. Uh, the Consolidated District Plan is revised and submitted each year to allow access to federal grant applications. Uh, so to lower the federal grants included in this Consolidated District Plan, uh, Title I, Improvement Based Programs, uh, Title I, 103A, School Improvement, Title II, Preparing, Training, Recruiting, High Quality Teachers and Staff, Title III, Language Instruction Education Program, Title III, Immigrant Student Education Program, Title IV, Student Support and Academic Enrichment, and Individuals with Disabilities Act or IDEA flow through the IDEA preschool, and more recently, Elementary and Secondary School Relief Grant or ESSER, ESSER two and three. The Consolidated District Plan has several purposes, including a, a summary of district needs assessment, a summary of stakeholder engagement activities, non-public school consultation information, uh, plans to support students' academic and social emotional needs, and professional development plans. The Consolidated District Plan is an annual requirement in the process to apply for next school year's federal grants. Suggested motion that the Board of Education approve the Consolidated District Plan for the 2022-2023 school year as presented. Mr. Jackson. And this will come. Roll call, please. Frank Miller. Aye. Jackson. Aye. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the quality of work. Thank you, Board of so. And Brian, you okay? Give us a two minute. You should take it by yourself. Tell us about yourself. Sure. Two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm pleasant to be here. I've worked uh, 10 years as a teacher, about five years as a village administrator, uh, assistant principal, and uh, the team was gracious enough to bring that board. So since about November, I've been working with Dr. Sullivan and district leadership here. And, uh, and really just trying to get the resources for our students, uh, according to grants and put things together so we can you know, qualify for these grants. Well, we have always saying here, get the ground running, right? Get the ground running. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. the work you've done so far has been very appreciative. So thank, thank you. you. Thank right. you. It's been out of being here. We expect more good things to come up. All right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for So I have some oral report comments very quickly. Uh, we need two board members, if possible, for our strategic planning process. Not everyone at once. <laughs> I'll keep following up. Uh, it's, it's important because what it does is it's helping us identify where we are now as a district, where we need to go, and then most importantly, how we're going to get there. So I'll reach out again in case there are any questions to see if I can try to, to get two members that would really help us to be a part of this process. And I know you're still working full time, right? Yeah. I love you. It is going to be a wonderful committee. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in this committee? <laughs> who would want to volunteer over there? In the department? Uh, oh, there we go. Let's hear that. <laughs> I think I already tried. We, all, we, we always have the right to want you to be on that committee. So you made a very good presentation. Oh, uh, so, uh, so I'll be in touch with everyone on that. Um, I also wanted to mention, I have, uh, there's a lot of handouts you get tonight. So I'll pass this out, but we're not gonna really talk about it in depth. But what this has to do with, it's related to, to strategic planning. And this is also related to staff retention. So throughout the school year, we have been working on developing the Berkeley Way. So just as we had a conversation last year about anticipating what it is going to be like for the children to come back to school, we've also worked to anticipate what it's like for the adults to come back to school and how they get, get along with each other coming back out of the pandemic. So all of the parents who came to our parents' workshop on, I believe it was April 4th or April 5th, 
we were so excited to have that because that was one of our first in-person events where we hit the parents' cabin. And so they each got two, a copy of these two books. But one of the things we've been working on is, is a key takeaway from the relationship, responsibility, and regulation book is there's a great analogy in there about the upstairs brain and the downstairs brain. And sometimes the way I describe it when I work with teams here is sometimes I react instead of responding. And I want to work on responding. Not reacting, because reacting is just like, but I want to respond, I want to think. I want to make good decisions. We talk in our leadership team all the time about discernment, making good decisions. So we asked the staff two questions this year. This went to every staff member. Question number one was, describe what you always want to see, hear, and feel during your professional interactions with colleagues in your school. And then we also ask the staff, describe what you never want to see, hear, or feel during professional interactions with colleagues in your school. So this is anticipating people being back together after being going through COVID. And this connects with that whole idea of staff retention because as one of my daughters once told me, she's an, a, a soccer player, and the other one's a softball player. He said, Dad, you have to feel good to play good. And I think about that even for work. You have to feel good to be a good colleague or to be a good teacher. But if you're feeling bad, that impacts everything you do. So we talked about that. The results from these handwritten anonymous surveys, we ended up getting, I want to say, about 140 of these back. We read through every single one of them multiple times, looking for themes. What, what, what is it that is happening with people? Like I'll give you one example that bubbled up. People in conversations, because we asked a lot of collaboration, staff reported they don't want to be interrupted. When they speak, they want to be heard. They don't want someone to cut them off. And then it would get into, if it's a younger staff member who gets interrupted, and feels that they don't belong, it's things like that. So we took all of that, that populated this. Okay. So without spending too much time, I'm trying to stay over to the right as much as I can. So I'm trying to do things like model mutual trust, to be supportive, open and honest. And if you notice, it's relationships on the left, communication, attitudes, behavior. We are beginning to have this in all of our meetings. So I met with the principals last week. We had this out. We all had it in front of it, up in front of us, and we're working on how we can implement that and actually monitor how we're treating each other because we have to set an example. Because if we don't, how are the teachers going to see that in our culture? So Mrs. Travis is even using this to share with prospective candidates. This is the Berkeley expectation. So we called this the Berkeley Renaissance. And that came out because back in February at the Institute Day, I talked to the staff and I shared that example of the Renaissance, sort of a rebirth. So now it's a rebirth for us. We're back into school. And things aren't the way they were before. People have gone through a lot. I can't tell you how many times parents have said to me, it's upstairs burning, downstairs burning. I, I hadn't thought of it like that. Now, it doesn't mean we still don't get in those places, but this helps us get out of it. So I would like the board, if you wouldn't mind, let's have these with us, and then we'll model it as well. We're going to continue to model it in all of our meetings. I have them in every place I have a meeting, I have them. And this is to help us focus on our relationships, our communication, our attitudes and behavior, it's sort of the Berkeley way. And we want to set a good example for how we do that. And I think if the kids see that, that will help them as well. So I just don't want to spend too much time on that. And uh, I'm going to be working on our intergovernmental intergovern agreements for next year, with child care before and after school. We'll work on that. Hopefully, we'll have some of that for next month. Um, I need to next month correct some of the position names. Last month, when we rehired 
some of our administrators, and I had an incorrect position because there were some title changes. So I just want to get that right. We'll do that again next month. And then I wanted to ask the board for next month uh, if how the board felt about trying to put our tables back together the way we used to be closer together. I didn't want to just do that without asking. Well, we suffered a little lot of asking. I guess we had no choice, right? Right. So maybe now you won't have a choice and just put us back together. I don't know. We could be like this for 15 more years, maybe. I'm not a leader when I'm in the board. You agree here. So, Mr. White, we're going to reconfigure the way this to be for next month. The main situation with this configuration is public participation. Is that there's not room for public to sit. Thank you. And that's all I have. Thank you. Appreciate it. Kurt, we'll get up next. Appreciate it. Is there a room? Oh, yeah, for us. All right. Well, I have an ELA update, the Sunday Darks update. So we have, um, thank you so much for the approval last month. Um, I want to just kind of give an update about that. The materials we have ordered and are set to arrive in the next couple of weeks. So our teachers will have them for the end of the year. We can start the rollout process of that. Um, this last um, couple of weeks, the curriculum instruction team have been to all of the staff meetings. We have held a staff meeting at all of the buildings to really talk about um, the philosophy and the approach um, and with how we've gone on this journey to adopt a more of an inquiry based um, instructional framework for English language arts, which has been kind of exciting. Um, we've put together from the pilots, um, the folks that piloted ARC, to um, we'll be working on designing the rollout um, for the professional development with them. Um, one of the things that's kind of been exciting is they will help us choose the, the themes for each of our units um, for the integration of our science and social studies that will be embedded. Um, for part of the into the ELA theme, so that we'll have the continuity between the ELA topics that they're studying and then the hands on science um, components later in the day. So, if it's like I said before, if we're studying plants, they'll have some um, reading about it and building background knowledge through our ELA curriculum and then have those hands on experiences um, during the science curriculum. So, I'm excited um, to see that. Um, our the uh, American Reading Company coaches will be on site um, throughout the year next year to provide that embedded professional development, but also to grow and build the capacity of our instructional coaches so that they can also carry and continue that on site embedded professional development. So we are up and running, and I'm really excited to see that going. So it's been exciting to plan. Alrighty, I have a little bit, if you'll indulge me just for a moment, um, put together. Um, Joe's going to show some slides for us while I talk a little bit. So last week, our buildings um, intentionally planned a lot of learning opportunities to build awareness for Earth Day um, around conservation, preserving our natural resources, planting. Um, so we got our parents involved. They did a lot of um, parent involvement. This is at one of our family's homes. They built some bird feeders. Um, our scholars created different items using recyclable materials. Um, they also did, uh, so here's some recyclable materials that they had um, in art classes. And um, again, they did bird feeders, they hung out different, um, made some wind chimes, made a robot with his. Um, they talked about from Dr. Seuss. Um, this is about what a happy earth looks like and all the things that would make it happy, what makes our earth sad, and the ways in our community. Um, Fix some bird feeders again, I believe. Then we planted some seeds at some of the communities. Um, they did some math, they did some graphing in their science, um, planting some seeds and they're watching it grow. They were excited. I got some um, emails this morning how some of them had started to sprout over the weekend. So they were very excited to share that with me as well. Oh, that's a close up of the happy, happy earth piece. Um, they also talked about their Earth's promise, things that they would take, they took some pledges on things that they would do as, as they grow um, older to keep going down, um, to help take care of our Earth. Um, oh, that's what I started putting a collage together. Joe was like, no, I'm just do it. <laughs> I'm do the slides, so keep going. 
And we have Mrs. Weisgarber um, helping us out with the garden club over at Sunnyside. Um, the, the weather didn't cooperate a lot, but we did some great things inside. So that was great um, to share throughout. Uh, so thank you for um, sharing your time, Mrs. Weisgarber, and sharing the pictures with me as well. Make it so we have lots of different plants, and there is Jetson, right? Oh, that's very, that's right. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Again, with some of the recycling pieces. And then the other thing that they did, well, we had a virtual field trip, which was very exciting. That's the film there with um, Joshua Tree National Park in California. Um, and Ranger CC took us through and talked through the, um, the team, the fourth graders around about erosion, and the kids created a model of erosion um, as well. Mm -hmm. So our fourth graders, or no, third, the fourth graders, fifth graders, fourth, third, fourth and fifth graders planting mm -hmm. seeds. Sorry, there was a range of classrooms. Um, but I was kind of I was really excited because we did several schools did families family projects. We did projects in the classrooms. Um, our um, sixth graders did a walking trip um, to Grant Park and did looked at um, abiotic and biotic. Um, and then they did some looking for abiotic and biotic um, materials. And then they did um, a writing prompt. So we did lots of different things throughout to celebrate the day. So I was very excited and I thought I'll put this compilation together. They've been coming, pictures have been coming in all day. So wanted to be shared, share with you what our uh, students and our teachers put together. And I also put around our final product of the Portrait of Scholar that our curriculum team has been working on. So I wanted to make sure you have that in English and Spanish, and they'll be you know, throughout the district. So thank you for your time. Any questions? Yeah, woman, and sorry, I'll try to. No, no, no rush. Come on. We don't put the blame on so sad. We said, Thank you, sir. I'll take the blame, Mr. Sosa. We'll talk about the summary of budget, statement of position, and the student activity reports for the period ending March 31, 2022. Are provided for your review. As I uh, talked to the board earlier this year, I am bringing forward the tentative amended budget. And as we discussed previously, the main focus is removing that state on the payment, which we would budget for in the revenue and the expenditure side. But there is no transaction that actually takes place in our general ledger. Uh, it's just a place marker, and uh, Joe Lightcap was here in December and said, uh, audit for the board. It's always a, a notation in the audit that the budget for that, and most districts have gotten away from doing that. So that was the main purpose of the amended budget. Included is the actual numbers for the 2022 bond issue, and then we are, uh, I think of some of the uh, categorical claim reimbursements and then the grants where our preliminary grant applications uh, may have been amended and over the next month or so uh, Mr. America will continue to amend the grants so I'll try to refine this a little bit more but we'll come back with the final budget amended budget for the for of June but for now the suggested motion is that the Board of Education approve the tentative amended budget for fiscal year 2022 as presented, established Monday, June 27, 2022, as the date for the public hearing on the budget, direct the Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Operations to have published the notice of public hearing for this date and to display the tentative amended budget for fiscal year 2022 in the Administration Center as required by law. Motion. Second. 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 Second.
Ms. O'Connell? Mr. Sosa? Roll call, please. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Hightower? Aye. Motion carried. The next agenda item is an annual item transferring the interest between from interest and retained funds. And I did have a conversation with the Township Treasurer's Office. Uh, in the backup, you, you can see that the decline in the interest earnings, and it's clearly tied to the pandemic when the economy just fell and interest was below 0 0.15, average of 0.1. So it significantly reduced our interest earnings. Uh, Positive feedback is that is now seeing uh, between 1.3% 1, 1. and 3% on different investments. And on a two to three year investment, they're seeing roughly 3% returns. So we are trending back to produce similar results as 20, uh, 2020. Again, significant earnings. And I'm just trying to back up that data. So, uh, so that's the backup. That, this to the board at least uh, something we look forward to as that improves. So the suggested motion is that the Board of Education adopt the resolution authorizing and directing the transfer of interest between funds as presented. Motion. Mr. Jackson, Mr. So O'Connell. Roll call, please. O'Connell. O'Connell. Hi. Dosa. Aye. Hi. Tower. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Motion carried. And the next item uh, to approve the employer services contract agreement that the board of education approve the renewal contract agreement with NSN employer services as presented. So, comments? Mr. Jackson, no comments? So, so. Aye. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Motion carried. That the Board of Education approve the Nutrition Service Department milk vendor contract for the 2022-2023 school year as presented. Motion. Ms. O'Connell. Mr. Sosa. Roll call, please. Hightower. Aye. Jackson. Aye. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Motion carried. The next item is an annual item to approve the AT&T program contract for 2022 2023 school year is presented. Motion. Mr. O'Connell. Mr. Jackson. No Jackson. Aye. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Hightower. Aye. Motion carried. And due to the timing of this uh, Centrix, ATT Centrix contract, uh, Mr. Dr. Sullivan did sign the agreement. Um, and we are bringing it forward for the board to ratify, the Board of Education ratify the AT&T Centrix contract as presented. Motion. Ms. O'Connell, Mr. Sosa, roll call please. O'Connell, aye. Sosa, aye. Hightower, aye. Jackson, aye. motion carried. And the next item is the postal uh, mailing equipment lease. Which is expiring next month, and the new lease would be uh, roughly five dollars less per quarter. The suggested motion is that the Board of Education approve the mailing equipment lease with Quadian Leasing USA Incorporated and Quadian Finance Incorporated pending internal attorney approval. Motion. So come, Mr. Jackson. Roll call, please. Sosa. Aye. Hightower. Aye. Jackson. Aye. O'Connell. Aye. Motion carried. As presented in the facilities committee meetings earlier this evening, the next item is regarding the change orders. The suggested motion is that the Board of Education approve change order number 42 through 49 as presented. Motion. So come. Mr. Jackson. Roll call, please. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Sosa? Aye. Motion carried. Also presented earlier this evening is the proposal from Wold Architects regarding the primary school improvement design project, which includes the construction and furnishings. 
The suggested motion is that the Board of Education approve the primary school improvement design proposal as presented. Motion, Mr. O'Connell. Mr. Jackson, roll we'll call, please. Jackson. Aye. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Hightower. Aye. Motion carried. And that the Board of Education approve the primary school HVAC upgrades design proposal as presented. Motion. Mr. O'Connell. Mr. Jackson. Roll call, please. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Hightower. Aye. Jackson. Aye. Motion carried. The Board of Education approved the Sunnyside, MacArthur, Riley, and Northlake School offices, special classrooms, learning commons, cafeterias, media centers, and miscellaneous office furniture be purchased through Lowry McDonald Company for the total, total furniture package in the amount of $2,286,472.60 through the NCPA. TIPS and Sourceful Purchasing Cooperative Bid Awards as presented. Motion. Mr. O'Connor, Mr. Sosa, roll we'll call, please. Sosa? Aye. Hightower? Aye. Jackson? Aye. O'Connell? Aye. Motion carried. Last, item, uh, last year we approved the lawn care ground maintenance agreement and uh, year two and year three, uh, 2022 and 2023 years were unknown because of construction. We weren't sure how much uh, area they would be able to maintain for us. So this is an amendment which gives us pricing for the 2022 year at a monthly rate of $1,350. And the suggested motion is that the Board of Education approve the amended contract agreement for Romano Landscaping LLC for lawn care and ground lawn care and grounds maintenance as presented. Motion. Mr. Sosa, Mr. O'Connell. Roll call, please. Hi, Howard. Hi. Jackson. Hi. O'Connell. Hi. Sosa. Hi. Motion carried. And then uh, just a brief oral report uh, is being notified us of an EBF uh, recalculation for FY18. You may have heard that in the news or read it in the paper. Uh, CPS was overpaid, and some districts, most districts were underpaid, some were overpaid. Uh, the most significant was Chicago Public Schools. But Dr. Sullivan uh, and the district received a letter indicating that we would receive approximately $317,000 plus any aggregate share of the gap between FY19 and FY22. So we do have. An additional funding source from uh, of EDF funds for correcting those past calculations. That's good news. It's good news. It is. So the next item, um, the which I Chris I shared with the board that the uh, county is doing a recapture levy and it addresses the any property tax appeal settlements. And uh, the ability to recapture that. So, the original information they shared with us was that the recapture amount would be approximately $568,000. Uh, we later received, on uh, March, we received a notice the updated amount is $379,000, roughly $379,000. So, we still have additional funds in the recapture levy. It's just less than they first announced. And uh, I received a call from our representative from Vanguard regarding the uh, pricing surges in natural gas and electric. And his recommendation uh, is to extend our rate lock. So we're currently locked in natural gas through June 2023 at a uh, very competitive rate, uh, probably 30 cents per barrel. So it is significantly lower than the rates they're seeing, but his recommendation is that we try to lock in uh, at least half of our anticipated gas usage. Now we do know that's going to change because part of the year we will have the new building and the old building over here. But we also know the new building is more efficient, even with more square footage, so we may not need as much as we spent at 
the original sunset chart. But this recommendation is that we lock in part of that. Uh, my request from the board is consensus to have Dr. Sullivan and I lock the rate with Vanguard and then bring it back to have the board ratify it because the timing does not coincide when he tells us the rate is at a dip. That's the best time. So it doesn't coincide with schedule it bring it to a board meeting. For consensus. Yes, Mr. Johnson. Yeah. Mr. Sosa. Okay. And then we'll also look at the electric as well. Okay. Thank you very much. And just a reminder uh, to receive additional information from. Regarding Cook County, the second installment of the tax bills will likely be very late, could be up to six months late. Um, there have been several workshops on short term borrowing. Um, fortunately, the board has a working cash fund, and we will be able to loan money from the working cash fund to the other funds that need it. If the, if the second installment is six months late, like the Saying potentially could happen, that would be past our December 1 uh, installment date. So we would have to move money from a working cash fund to debt service to make that payment. That could pretty pick up the funds as well. So I want to make sure the board is aware of that. And lastly, uh, I wanted to publicly thank Marcus Shelton, our nutritional services uh, director, as well as the staff. In the kitchen at MacArthur and the head cook. Um, last Friday, Marcus and I met with the director of finance and food services site manager from Belleville District 88. Uh, their board is asking them to investigate a self operated option. They currently vend their meals and they know we're self operated. The director of finance in Bellwood, you meet some of you have met her, she was part of our community members on the committee for long range planning committee so she is a member of our community she's aware of the um, program we have in the district and they were very interested in learning about that so we met with them answered the questions about the self-operated model that we use and then marcus took them on a tour to observe macarthur uh, lunch serving and as well as a tour of the kitchen had cook took some time out to answer some questions for them. So they're very, very interested, but probably schedule time. And they were very grateful for what Marcus did and I spent the time with them. We did share with them that we are not moving all of our equipment. So there could potentially be a way to recycle the equipment instead of having it demolished with the building. We'll continue to update the board. But I just wanted to share that information and thank uh, Mr. Sh Mr. Shelton and the kitchen staff and director. That's the end of my report, unless there are any questions. Any questions? Good report for this mess. Thank you. Can I be the last one? You will be on punishment. Miss Travis. Can you go this for what? Okay. All right. Um, what is the update you want our vacancies and interviewing at this time? I'm not listing the vacancies out because we have you know a nice amount of them because we're getting ready for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, but interviewing has um started as you see, we have some recommendations for new hires, which we're really excited about. And so uh, the principals are continuing to interview. Wanted to update the board on HB 1167. And this is the COVID administrative leave days that the governor signed. So for the 2021-2022 school year, we will be uh, reinstating the sick days that employees use due to COVID. It, um, the staff members must be vaccinated or if they get vaccinated 
um, up to five weeks after the governor passed this bill. And so we wanted to let you know we have a quick turnaround to start working with the staff members to um, reinstate their sick days. We have to start on this and have something fixed by May 10th. This may or could expire May 1st. And if so, then um, after, if it expires, then moving forward, employees won't be able to have administrative leave for their sick days. But if it doesn't expire, then this will last for, you know, the rest of the school year. Am I right, Dr. Sun? Yes, and that expired, what Mr. Travis is talking about, it's from the governor's executive order. And that's set to expire the current one for this on May 1st. May 1st, yeah. And those are many days, correct? Which one that administrative? Yeah. Once we convert them back home. Right, they get their sick days back, but they get administrative pay. So yes, they are paid. <clears throat> yes. So we're getting the process together in place to work with them. And every school district in Illinois is having to do this. Friendly reminder, statement of economic interests are due by May 2nd. Please send me your uh, email confirmation. They have changed some of the questions, so you want to read it as soon as you log in, it'll pop up. Um, and then they have definitions that if you're like, okay, because I was that way, like, uh -oh. but they have definitions for you to read to understand the questions. So, and then last but not least, um, I'm working with two retention committees, certified staff on um, retention committee and support staff on uh, retention committee. Um, the certified teaching committee, um, we just have to choose a date and we're going to meet. It's a lot going on and the end of the year is approaching. So my hopes is to meet at least twice the rest of this school year. But if not, I'm understanding because some of them are serving on other committees, we'll meet once. And then for the support staff, the same. Um, we have about 15 or 16 teachers on the teacher retention committee. And then for the support staff, we have five or six people. So I'm still trying to recruit a few more people to join that committee. But I'll give you updates as we meet and share out you know, what we're working on in our next steps and we will meet throughout next school year as well um, for retention but we thought to separate the two committees we wanted everybody to have voice sometimes we'll come together to talk about what each committee is doing so we're all aware and, uh, we're really hoping that this helps with our retention any questions any questions thanks Ms. Travis. thank you Mr. White. So, oh, yeah, Ron. Uh, <laughs> the board of, uh, the situation is happening at Ryan School. Now, it's been briefly brought up in the previous board meeting in the past, but I want to bring a bit more detail to it. Riley School had an addition built on to their building around the same time that Jefferson and Whittier were built. What we discovered is that the building was starting to settle. So it is settling where the addition meets the old building. On the west side, it's probably settled about an inch and a half. It's not going to affect our construction uh, process this round. So the two rooms that are closest to the original building, we're just going to push those two rooms off until next year. I'm working with the architects and engineers in the situation. Now, the engineers are coming up. They're going to come up with a series of things to do to try to figure out what's going on. It could be, you know, a variety of things. It could be you know, soil that is bad. It could be, you know, maybe a concrete floor wasn't right. It could be, you know, multiple things. So they're going to have to do some tests. They have to figure out if the building has, is still currently settling or has it stopped settling. So we'll probably have to put some testing devices on it to measure it. And that's a long term test where they'll stick some device on there and leave them there for six months to a year to see if it moves in that time frame. They're probably going to have to take more samples of the ground around that area to kind of get a better idea of what the substrate looks like. 
So there's a situation there that, would, and then once they can figure out what caused it, then they can start working on the plan to solve it. So that's where we are with grass. So if your plan is stayed, not, it will be done for you. Here, thank you. The, the work will continue in that building except for two classrooms. The two, those two classrooms were due this summer of 22. We just pushed those classrooms back to the summer of 23. There's no safety. There's no safety. We found just this past weekend the, the soil situation over there in that area is bad. It's worse than the soil situation that we had over here. So this weekend when they were digging, they found the old road. It was still on the ground well, through the North Lake field. I mean, the curbs there, the streets there, it's about two feet down. So, we'll, 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 you know, well, we haven't really started digging, digging that because of the gas line situation, but it's just the stuff they found so far. So, once the engineers get the testing companies out, we will be able to provide more information for us. That's what we're working on. Safety first. Of course. Yeah. Anything else? We're working on, I'm working on, you know, the construction of the new building. We have to work on the crisis plans for that building, the evacuation plan, safety plan, those schedules. Any questions? I will be suggesting additional facilities there. And I think that recommendation will be for that staff to start when the new buildings are built right. and ready to be occupied. I'll have a breakdown for you the square footages and industry standards and all that stuff. Questions? Questions? Ms. Burke? Thank you. Just a few quick items. So, our Skyward returning student online enrollment is open. So, our current campus until the next school year is Skyward. We also have new student online enrollment, which is the same similar product for all of our new families. Those are live. We again use a system called Clear for a residency verification. So, if uh, previous years, um, not last few years, but prior to that, all of our families would come in for residency verification. So we use this system to make our processes a little more efficient, save our families some time. And then any family that does not clear through that online system, we have a process to bring those families in to ask further questions to make sure that the families that are attending our schools do, in fact, live within the district in a certain property. So that process is in. Of course, we sent out some letters last week and this week to communicate to families whether they can come in and go to private residency for the 22 school um, So, working on a specific Friday and work like some work. Um, we have a tight window as the main and bulletin does, but for us to get um, all the network and instructor switch out, all the classroom technology is in the wind for all the classrooms that are going to be renovated this summer. This in room in there is a one of the displays that will be installed in the classroom. That just gives you a little bit of a visual of the technology that will be installed in our new buildings, mounted to the two walls. And all of our classroom technology engagement, wireless, um, reliable, um, simple, or robust. That's kind of the themes of what we're trying to implement in our new buildings. Um, so that's one of the tools that will be installed. Um, working on technology purchases, as is a theme, supply chains and deliveries are unknown. Um, trying to make sure that we have all the equipment we need to start the next school year. That's in full force. And then we're also meeting with some middle school teams tomorrow uh, to work on, to get a demonstration from a company called the Social Institute. Um, among other things, that our company focuses on teaching our students to be digitally literate with a focus on social media. Um, 
relationships, social skills. So we are looking at this tool to help our students and staff, specifically our middle schools. So we'll be learning more about that product tomorrow. Um, and I'll keep you up to date if um, anything comes of that. Do you have anything to do with technology class? Now we're going to start to see the word in the administration has a great job of providing me adequate and robust tools, um, but I will always keep up to date with the student. That's the part of the Thank you. Great. I was a little wondering what you were talking about with your say they're playing bones from all the raptors outside. Um, I just want to say a quick moment's update on summer school because I have had the privilege of working with our very dynamic principal, Jen Barr, from, who is the assistant principal of Lord Ash Jefferson, and then Christina Lewis, who is the assistant principal of Lord Lake. Um, because they're ready for some big branding this year for the summer school. We're going to the camp thing, so we're calling it Camp Berkeley. And then each week, they're actually going to be doing different themes for focus on my SEL. So we encourage perseverance and teamwork. And I think the most exciting part that we're dabbling in right now is that we're looking at a house system. And I don't know how familiar you are with something more seen in like the middle school setting, where like everybody kind of has their house that they associate with and they go through these challenges. So it's not necessarily the kids in the class or necessarily in the grade level. But the people in the house. And so we are going to try and do this K8, which is a whole new experience because our buildings typically aren't even K8 um, for summer school. So um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be some unlearning. It's going to be some new opportunities. And like I said, those, those two are going to be a phenomenal job of just really challenging status quo to make this an exciting experience for our kids. And I think we're going to watch the last one. So make sure to get you guys an invite to, to come out to see. Our big culminating activity, and then um, Camp Duncan. We're almost there, two weeks away. Uh, another thing that I'm so excited about I'm a huge, huge lover and advocate of Camp Duncan and my years of being here. But this is the first time we're taking all of our fifth graders, so both the north side and the south side, providing the opportunity to every one of our kids. And they are going to see some I think we're at about 97 percent, 98 percent participation. So, and I know you guys have been many of you have been on this board for a long time. That is a totally different number. I know it's not an overnight trip this year, but still, I think even getting this excitement is huge. And uh, since Brian's sitting right here, he's right on him for a moment. He spent a lot of time with me looking at our grants and trying to make this opportunity uh, available to all the So, yeah, we get some good stuff coming up. And, Sure. Summer school, we win. Summer school starts on June 8th. June 8th, and what school? Grace Jefferson and Whittier. And the target number? Over 300. So, Brian, are you working on a grant for summer school? Is There's a, is a about three or four major grants that won't fund it. Yeah, something like 35, 35 seconds, approximately. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, June 8th to so June. June 30th. So we'll just take it before July. We'll have a, an ending event too, so we'll make sure you guys get the opportunity to participate. You're always welcome to come during the day too. Okay. Especially, I see you sitting in the back. How are we doing? Thank you. Thank you for asking. Yes. Yes. Just a few things. I'm standing behind the chair. I'm standing there. So, um, and for English learners, we are working on face-to-face -face, um professional development for our non-certified staff. That's actually going to happen here on Saturday. Um, we are providing uh, training on sheltered English instruction. Um, for um. Are very excited to see us prepare professionals. Uh, we are also working with uh, what Mr. Byrne included, which is it's the beginning of registration. So, with registration, we have all of the EL screenings to identify student placement and whether students qualify or not uh, for our services. And then the last piece is we have parent engagement. We have 
Uh, one more learning engagement that's going to take place here in the district on um, May 8th, Wednesday, May 8th, that Whittier. You're welcome to join us with uh, Dr. Fidney. And then we have two offsite uh, professional developments for our parents. One is the state conference, which happens every single year, the Saturday before Mother's Day. That's a full day. Uh, we This year, the, the state uh, is providing us with eight seats. We have five filled. We still are waiting on three more. And then we have Dr. Fidney uh, uh, who does a parent and adolescent professional development, very along, very much along the social emotional uh, components. And that one is going to be on May, on Saturday, May the 28th. And for that one, we have 12 parents and then the children that attend with our parents. So those are the events that are coming in and that we're working on. Are you used for parent engagement? How's that? How's it working out? Other people engage other parents? So we have, um, with the pandemic, we did a couple of professional development opportunities for our parents uh, through Zoom meetings. Those were, we had a single, we had engagement. Uh, they were in, in the single digits initially, and then the numbers went up to double digits. We started the face-to-face -face just recently um, and for the first session we had, we were in single digits. For the second session, which just happened last week, we were actually in double digits. And so the, um, the great thing with the parent engagement for the second session is that normally our participants are the, the moms. For this one, our dads actually outnumbered our moms. And the engagement was... Yeah. Phenomenal. So yes, <laughs> yes. Lots of questions though, that we were. Yeah, we were very pleased. Um, we have several of them who will be going with us to the state conference. So several of them are going to join us for the Saturday session, which is the parent adolescent. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Go Thanks for strong. I really appreciate it. We always want and we want you to be more involved as well. So Dr. Sutter is looking for you volunteers. So, <laughs> All right. Wait, anything else? Any other announcements? Next board meeting will be May 23rd. May 23rd. <laughs> At seven o'clock. Okay. 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 You have a motion to adjourn. Mr. Jackson. Ms. O'Connell. Roll call, please. Jackson. Aye. Right. O'Connell. Aye. Sosa. Aye. Aye. Tower. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody.